Songs are but poems that have never been read. And what about the songs that haven't been heard? They become stories. And what about the stories that were never told? They become memories, perhaps? And what happens to memories that are buried? On rainy nights such as these, they float across the universe as clouds and lyrically settle into a deep sigh. My name is Ananya Mukherjee. I'm an author and a storyteller based in Singapore. And this is my second book, An Unborn Desire. It is a collection of 15 short stories um, that were inspired by the travels that I did, the people that I met, uh, the experiences that I had. Some of them were loaned, of course, from meeting people dif from different cultures, different backgrounds across the world. And uh, yes, uh, so that's what the book is all about. It was launched by Rupa Publication this year in September. And it is available on Amazon. It is available in Kindle. And it is available with me as a hard copy in Singapore. The second book, my first book was Adhisattva. It was published in 2016. It was also a collection of 20 short stories. And uh, I think I poured a lot of my own emotions in that book. There was an element of truth, half-truth in all of the stories, just as the name says, Ardhisattva. In this one, I was uh, more you know, experimenting with people's emotions, uh, stepping into the shoes of other people. Of course, there were shoe bites. It's never easy to step into somebody else's shoes and to emote or to empathize with them. And that's what happened when I actually spoke to several people or saw something or observed something, some of their behaviors, some of their complications, some of their memories or experiences. And it kind of inspired me to become their voice. A lot of my readers come back and tell me that they connect very well with the book, uh, with my, most of my writing. And um, I think that's where the reward is because I'm not telling my story. I want to tell your story using my voice and my pen. A lot of people feel the same things, but they are, for some or the other reason, unable to put them in words. I think my greatest strength lies in that connection, in being able to tell your story using my voice. And this is just an attempt to do that. There are 15 stories divided into four segments. Each of them have a different theme and there are stories that are based across the world. I love to travel. So there are places that I've been to and I wanted to bring back some of that culture through the book. So there are stories about say Morocco and Egypt and uh, Africa and Istanbul. So it's kind of a ride across the world. And as some very wise people have said that a book actually exposes you to the world, takes you to places that you haven't been to. This is also an attempt to bring up, bring some of those memories, some of those experiences, um, and therefore the stories are based, most of them are based in different parts of the world. So they just don't belong to Singapore or India. So it can't typically be called an Indian book or, a, you know, or, or can't be tagged to a geography. It is very global per se, uh, in terms of the characters, in terms of the locations and uh, the culture. So well, things that I've seen and um, experienced or observed. So the first story, Unborn Desires, is my favorite of the book. Um, I'm going to tell you what it is about after I read out the first bit. Do you know what they did to me? No, I don't. Of course you don't. How could you? You were sedated and lying there like a rag doll, unconscious while they cut me up into little pieces with cold metal, severing me from you forever. I'm sorry. I didn't know you suffered as I did. Did it hurt? They convinced me you wouldn't feel a thing. You aren't human yet. Oh, my body, or whatever that piece of flesh and blood was, felt nothing. Just a pinch, a tiny pinch of the cold, sterilized weapon. But my soul? Your soul? What about your soul? Yes, my formless, my infinite, my liberated soul. 
It was there within that plot of flesh. It was living and breathing within your boundaries. One day, I'll find the body again and take form. Would you recognize me then, Mama? So this is the first story, the title story, and of course the name of the book is based on that story. I was in a conversation with a friend who spoke about the dilemma that she was going through because she had been to a past life regression therapist. And this is anybody, just one of us, and uh, living a normal life with her husband and children. And suddenly she goes to this past life regression therapist and discovers things about herself that she didn't know. And she was at that point where she was kind of oscillating between her past and her present. So that acceptance or the lack of it or the denial of the ex existing present and the past that she has lived through was a mental uh, state that she was grappling with. And I, when I spoke with her, it intrigued me so much. It just made me feel human emotions are so complicated, but the soul that you know moves from one body to another apparently has a very simple journey. It just moves from one body to another and that's it, it lives on. And that's the truth that one must accept. But uh, this kind of inspired me. I spoke to a lot of people who've gone through past life regression therapy as well studied a bit and the one thing that came back to me was uh, souls move in groups the fact that um, the atma the, is actually in bengali we call it atyo relatives are atyo the word atyo comes from the word atta and atma is the soul right so which actually means the people you're living with today have been in some form or shape related to you in your other life and will be related to you in your next life. So this word is not, it's not the blood relation. It's the relation of the soul. It's the connection of the soul that creates the world around you. So your universe is full of people who you have traveled with through multiple lives. And that really, really touched me. I was like, oh my God. So the Saad Janamka Saad is actually not a myth or People have memories and it is not just, um, you know, it's not a gimmick and that's how I used to look at it. So there are dialogues in the story which are pretty much the con con confusion or question. I with a very scientific mind that, oh, this is all gimmick, you know, this, is, this doesn't work. But when I spoke to these people and they said, yes, I have gone through this process of hypnotism and I have so said things that uh, I didn't know were true about me. I was very intrigued, I have to tell you. I was like, oh my God, this is something I need to talk about. This is something real and uh, therefore the story. And I had a question in my mind that do souls, okay, living body is fine, but do souls have memories of lives that were not fulfilled? Say for example, if it's a bird that has not, or you know, a, a child maybe, an unborn child, will it have memories? Because the soul is already there, right? So that's the question I had in my mind. So for any reason, if a child is not born, does not mean that the child will not have a birth for the soul. Uh, so that was another question. So I kind of put it all together and uh, wanted to write this story. So that's my favorite. The story that kind of uh, ripped me apart was a story about a girl in Rajasthan and that's one of my favorite stories. Uh, so there's a real story in Rajasthan where there's a village that was abandoned and it lies there as an abandoned village. Nobody visits that place. It's a tourist place but there is a government of India signage that says paranormal activities happen here after 6 p.m. so you better not be here. It's close to Jaisalmer. And I wanted to figure out what is the story behind and folklore says that uh, this village was actually abandoned by the Paliwal Brahmins because one of the village girls um, was her modesty or you know her she was kind of under the evil eye of a Divan of Jaisalmer and the villagers abandoned that village one night because they wanted to protect the girl from the village so and they left a curse behind 
I kind of dramatized it and I went back to that scene imagining you know three or four centuries back what would what might have transpired on that night where in uh, India where we see a lot of uh, discrimination against women a lot of crime against women happening in today's world actually four centuries back an entire village gave up their lives and their livelihoods I mean they gave up their livelihood and their usual com comfortable life to protect one girl so I think that inspired me greatly and when I was writing that story I always get goosebumps because I compared her to the villagers worship Mahishashur Mardini and I always compare her this girl to the goddess because what's the point in worshipping the goddess if you can't protect your own girl and that's what the villagers did they actually protected the girl so when I was writing that story it just gave me absolute goosebumps I was like oh my god this is someone's telling me this story and uh, that's that's another story that was very difficult to write because I was kind of transporting myself back in time and trying to imagine what might have happened that night I have been asked to write a novel and um, I'm dwelling on it I'm dwelling on it I have been also asked to write a cookbook and I'm thinking which one goes first but uh, something will come up soon there is one story in particular which is kind of a sarcasm on the uh, the society it's called the judgment call and uh, it's one of these stories in the book which has a which has a, a tinge of humor the others are quite serious that one is a bit of a humor sarcastic uh, dig at the society and i think that will make a fantastic play or a one act play kind of a thing so i am considering writing it into a script for a play uh, for a film yes i think a lot of these stories have the potential to be uh, developed further into a web series or a film and i have been in conversations with some of my friends who are into films and they've been talking about it so let's see how it goes In the dead of the night, when the storm was at its peak and the roads were shrouded in darkness, we packed the essentials, held the hands of our loved ones, got into our camel carts and abandoned our village forever. At the fringe of the village, Sheba got off the back of her camel and stood still for a moment. Her face was held up towards the village. Her midnight black hair was blowing over her lean shoulders. From a few steps away, I could see the dark silhouette of a bronze bluish woman against the desert storm holding a shiny metal kharga in her hands mantrahinam kriyahinam bhaktihinam sureshwari yat pujitam maya devi paripurnam tadastume even if i failed in my mantra or karma or devotion i hope you will accept my offer